What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Hope you're all doing well. Now I'm building another planter. This one is a hoop house or a polytunnel top on a raised bed planter and it's hinged so you can lift up the top and get access to your plants. We have some chains that we can hold it back. It's a nice light frame on the top. It's a nice way of building yourself a hoop house. It's a very simple construction. This is kind of similar to how I've built all my workbenches and stuff. So any of you guys who've been following my channel, you will understand how this goes together. So I go through that pretty quickly in this video, but I tried to keep this project so that again, anybody could make it. So if you're only into gardening and you're not into woodworking or making stuff or carpentry or anything like that, you will be able to put yourself together one of these. Now this one is quite large. This is a 2.4 meter by 1.10 meter or eight feet by three and a half feet. You can adapt this to any size you want. That's the beauty of this design. It can be made any size you want, like I said, and it's nice and simple with relatively inexpensive components. All in all, for this planter, it's about 160 euros worth of materials I've put into it to get yourself a nice big planter like this. And you can get quite a lot of veg for a family out of a planter this size over the year, especially with a polytunnel or hoop house top. So without further ado, let's crack on, build ourselves a raised planter with a hoop house or polytunnel top. Okay, let's crack on with this planter. Now the main body of the planter is extremely easy and quick to assemble. So I've been and I've dimensioned up all the lumber already. I don't want to bore you guys with that. If you watched any of my planter videos, you'll have seen me use that miter saw loads of times so you don't need to see me use it again. And I've already been and assembled the legs in the L shape with the two two by fours. Now, Regular viewers of my channel, you'll have seen me construct multiple projects using this system. My MFT table, my miter saw station and multiple planters. And if you're new here and you haven't seen me do this, I would suggest you can go back and watch them. I go through this thing at nauseum, but it's very, very simple. It's just a case to take two by fours, put them together in L shape and screw them together. And this will make up your legs and also the internal part of your frame. It'll all make perfect sense now in a minute. So the dimensions of this planter, what I'm using for it is seven by ones are 175 mil by 25 mil boards. So we're gonna use 40, so it's gonna be four boards high, that's 28 inches or about 710 millimeters. And it's going to be one meter 10 in width and 2.4 meters in length. So that's about three and a half feet by about eight foot in length. You don't wanna make it too wide because then you can't reach in and get to your plants at the back. So let's crack on and assemble the main body. You'll see this come together. It's extremely simple. Let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna start screwing this planter together. As you can see how the legs work. Again, I won't belabor this now because you will have seen me do this hundreds of times before on, on multiple different videos. The only thing you need to remember is put your short sides in first. So the internals of the leg have a full length of four inches here, but it's only two inches here. So put on your two inch side board first and then put your board into the long side. That way you have plenty of material left in your long side. If you do it the other way around, you only have a small little bit of material left on your short side. It's very, very simple. So it's just a case of slot these boards in, stack them up just like that. Your legs acts as your frame and your legs and you just screw this up. So let's get on and do it. There we go, that's the main body of the planter assembled. It took all of 10 minutes, so it's a really quick and easy way of doing it. Again, the two by four legs put into an L shape, put your short side in first, then your long side in, screw everything together. And it's nice, quick and easy to do. And it's extremely strong and stable. And I've built workbenches, racks, shelves, all sorts of stuff with this and planters. So I'm not gonna get into it too much because I've done it so much on this channel already, like I said. But I link to all the videos below, but the previous planters where I go more in depth into this, you guys can check it out. If you're new here for everybody else, you'll have seen me do this a hundred times. Now I just added a leg to the center as well, just because it's a long span, just to give it a little bit more support. But essentially now that is the main planter, body of the planter built. It's gonna be an open bottom because this is gonna sit directly on the ground. So we're not gonna put any bottom in this. We're just gonna fill it full of soil and everything we'll have in the garden, compost the whole lot to get this filled up. But that's essentially the main body complete. Now, I wanna put a couple of two by fours or four by twos around this to make a frame then for our hoop house top. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is just gonna add a four by two or two by four all the way around the top in between the legs. This is just gonna give me a little bit more thickness to sit 
sit the hoop house frame on top of because the one inch timber on its own would be a little on the thin side. So we're just gonna cut pieces to go in between all the legs and screw that all around the top. Now, I'm using pressure treated for the legs and non-pressure treated for the internals of the planter. I don't want any pressure treated timber near where I'm growing my vegetables because it can leach out. And this is some old pressure treated stuff that I have. This stuff was actually outside um, for about four years, four and a half years. So you can still see it's still pretty good. So pressure treated stuff does last and I didn't put any more treatment on it. So yeah, I'm gonna recycle this and use it for this planter. So pressure treatment for the legs and the outside, non-pressure treated for the inside. Okay, that's more or less the main body of the planter built now. So I'll just put the two by fours around the edge, like I said, just to thicken it up, just so we can put our frame of our hoop house. Now that's gonna be hinged that we can lift up and it'll sit on that, just a little bit more support all day around. Now all in all, that's probably a half an hour's work between cutting the timber and screwing it all together. Extremely simple. And now we have essentially an eight foot by three and a half foot or 2.4 by one meter 10 wide planter that we can grow a whole pile of different vegetables in that you will get probably about 60 kilos worth of vegetables over the year of a planter that size and that's enough I suppose that's probably a third of what a family would consume over a year so uh, yeah just from one planter you can actually do that now let's get on make the hoop house frame that's what we're all here to see is how we do this so let's crack on okay so for the hoop house frame it's going to be nice and simple it's just going to be butted together I'm going to add a couple of 45 degree blocks on top of this just to strengthen the corners and we're using these big long riser cutter screws to screw these together that's just going to sit on top of the frame so you just build this top frame the exact same width as the frame that it's sitting on and this is going to open and close so it's not going to be fixed to it we'll hinge it on one side and then we'll have chains and stuff you'll see it in a minute but the hoop house itself is going to be extremely light so this frame doesn't have to be particularly strong and this is just a nice simple construction method i'm trying to keep this as simple as possible so that anybody can make this in your workshop with a few tools. So it's just a case of butt these together. Now we're using really long screws here. So I'm just gonna pre-drill these with a six mil or quarter bit. It just makes driving these big long screws that much easier. So line everything up, keep it nice and straight. And screw it home. And with these big screws in it, it's gonna be a pretty strong joint, but we will add a couple of 45 degree blocks on top. Just like that. So there we go, that's the frame of our hoop house top build. It's just a couple of 45 degree blocks just to strengthen up those corners. Again, this frame is gonna be so light, it doesn't really need strengthening. So the whole idea is there'll be hinges all along the back. You just catch this and you can lift it up. We'll have chains on the front. So you can actually just lift this up and let it up out of your way and it will support itself off the chains. Or you could actually put support sticks in here as well. If whatever you so choose, whatever room you have behind your hoop house to actually lift this up, then you can come up with whatever mechanism you like. I'm gonna use just some chains. I'm able to catch it. Just leave it lie back and the chains will catch it then. Like I said, really the only weight in this is the four by two or the two by four. What we're gonna build the actual hoop house out of now is gonna be so light. So that's our next job. Let's get on and build a hoop house. Okay, so we're onto the frame part of the hoop house. Now, what I'm gonna be using is 20 millimeter plastic conduit. Now, I'm an electrician, so this is the stuff that jumped out of me that would be excellent to use. It's nice, lightweight, and flexible. You will get this stuff in any electrical wholesaler. Just pop in, tell them you want 20 millimeter round plastic conduit. Comes in three meter lengths. Like I said, it's nice and lightweight and relatively flexible as well. You could probably use Qualpec, maybe inch Qualpec you could do for this. The plastic conduit is just a little bit more rigid, a bit more rigid than the Qualpec pipe, the plumber's pipe. So um, that's what I'm going to be using 
using. So let's get this cut to size and let's get putting our frame together. It's gonna be nice and simple, it's just a few screws. This will go together quite quickly indeed. Okay, first thing we wanna do is establish the height of our hoop house. We're just gonna catch our plastic conduit. We're gonna bend it. Now I wanna keep this, we're gonna drill 20 mil holes down along the length of this. I'm gonna have five uprights to hold this together and then we'll tie all the uprights together as well. So the height of about there, I'm just gonna guess at that. That's roughly where I want it. You could go a little bit higher maybe, maybe about there. We don't wanna make it too big. And um, like I said, we're gonna drill 20 mil holes in this and this will literally just sit down into our frame and we'll screw it in place. So what I'm gonna do now is just hold that right there like so. I'm gonna take a mark, which is right there. And I'm gonna cut five of these all exactly the same size right there. Okay, so I've marked five even spaces in the middle of the four by twos for my five uprights. Just when you're drilling the end, remember you've drove in two long screws there if you've built it the same way as me. So just make sure you're drilling in between your screws. And I have an auger bit that will fit that conduit and I've just marked it with some tape here so that all the holes are gonna be the exact same depth. So it's just a case to drill these out. Now that all the holes are drilled, it's just a case of pop in your conduit. Okay, so now that all the uprights are in, what I'm gonna do is drive a screw straight through these conduits to keep them held in place. So we're gonna go straight through that conduit and through the timber. So we want a screw that's long enough to go in and out the other side, just to keep all these pinned in place because you don't want this flying up and uh, actually hitting you in the face. That would be no fun whatsoever. So I just wanna make sure that we have a screw that's long enough to do that. So there we go, nice and simple. locked in place. Okay guys, so now that we have our five uprights in place, I wanna add a little bit of structural rigidity to this, so we're gonna use some more conduits. Now we're just gonna screw these all together, so I'll probably put five in total across, again, just to hold everything in place. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna drill an eight mil hole in the conduit, and then I'm gonna put a little one inch screw inside in that, and screw it to this. And I just have a couple of cable ties holding it in place, so that it's held either end, and it just makes it the job that little bit easier. So, I've just marked up 100 mil from the timber up to here from my first one, I'll do the same on both sides, and then we'll put one here, here, and maybe one dead center down the middle as well. And that'll just help hold everything together, it doesn't have to be that strong, um, it just has to be slightly rigid. So. 8 mil hole right here. Okay guys, there we go, that's the hoop house top now all completed, our frame completed, so just screwed, and then I added two cable ties to each joint just to give it a little bit extra support. Why not? Just, you know, in case we get a lot of wind or anything like that, the screws might pull out. They're probably pretty solid, but a couple of cable ties in an X formation, and it just adds a little bit of strength. And it's still extremely lightweight, so it's gonna be nice and easy to lift up when we put the hinges and stuff on. Now, we have to look at getting the polythene on. I haven't decided 100% how I'm gonna do this, so let's have a look and see what we're gonna do. Okay guys, this is what I'm using. So this is 500 gauge clear polythene. Um, it is UV resistant, so it should last a while now. It's pretty light, although it is fairly strong. You can get a 1000 gauge polythene that they actually use for polytunnels, which is really heavy duty stuff. It is a little bit expensive. It's hard to find it in smaller amounts. It usually comes on like 100 square meter rolls 
um, and it can be like 125 to 150 euros. You can buy smaller cuts of it, it's just a little hard to get locally, but this was readily available. You will find this kind of 500 gauge polythene, like I said, in any builder's providers, they will have this stuff. So. Um, we could potentially double up on this. I'm going to roll it out over the top of the sheet. I'm going to see what way I want to fix this on, but um, we'll see when it's on. Let's get it on. Okay, so it's going to be a case of leaving a nice overhang either side so that we can wrap this up and pull it tight. And we just roll it out along the center. Let it hit the floor, get a scissors to cut that then. Okay, and then just in case we fold it out. Okay, to attach this, this is the idea I had. I think this is what I'm going to run with. Even though it's going to add a little bit more weight to the frame, it shouldn't be detrimental. So some two by two, or just split down some four by two, which is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to wrap the polythene in this, around it, sit that on the outside of the frame and screw this in place and do that all the way around. So we get on like three sides and we'll be able to pull it tight then. Um, so I think that's exactly what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to split down some 4x2, some pressure treated 4x2, and use that to clamp this all the way around. And this is something we can screw off then if we ever need to replace our polythene. Um, so that should work nicely. Let's get on and do that. Okay guys, so I've put a 2x2 two two, um, in there and I've just rolled it up. It's a little tricky to do on your own, so I didn't kind of catch it on camera, but I'll do the far side now and show you. And I've put a few staples, so this is screwed down the two by two, and then I've just put some staples in to hold down the polythene. So it's nice and rolled up in that. I'll do the same on the other side, and that will pull it tight, and then we can do the same on both ends, and uh, that should be good. And this is removable, so it's a case of just pull these screws, unroll your polythene, put on your new polythene whenever you need to, roll it back up, and uh, just should be able to, you know, be reusable and give you good tension in the polythene as well. So let's crack on. Okay guys, there we go. The polythene cover is now on. We have our frame all the way around, keeping it pinched down, pulling it nice and tight. So that worked out quite well. Now, there's an obvious flaw to what I've done here, and I've created a gully essentially in here, so rainwater is gonna gather there, so I'll have to put a couple of drain holes in. The ideal scenario would be to take the polythene under the frame itself in here, up onto the far side, roll it up and pin these two by twos on the inside. However, that's a two person job. You would need someone here to help you do that. I'm on my own, so keeping it to the outside is how it's gonna to have to be for me. Uh, just bearing in mind that I've now created a gully all the way around that rainwater can gather in. So it's just a case to let that drain off. Shouldn't be too big an issue. If it does become a big issue, I'll do an update video and let you guys know. I'll also let you guys know how this polythene is holding up. And uh, before the video is out as well, I'll give you a look at the last tr plantar trough that I built and I can show you how the vegetables are coming along. They're all starting to pop out of the ground there now. So. We're almost there, so to get the hinges on the back of this, then we can fit the chains to the front, and uh, we can see how the mechanism is going to work. Okay, for the back then, I just have some galvanized butt, butt hinges. Again, nothing fancy. These will do the job absolutely perfect, and there'll be more than enough strength in four of these to hold this top. Like I said, there's no weight in it really, apart from the few uh, four by twos. So it's just a case of screw these on. We'll space them out evenly, and we should be good to go. Okay, there we go. That is hinging nicely there now. And like I said, it's not overly heavy. It's just the two by four frame. That's uh, most of the weight. Now you could 
use two sticks to hold this up. You could make a mechanism for doing that. Um, like I said, all I'm going to do is just fit two chains to this now so that it just, when the weight starts to go back, the chains will go taut and it'll just hold it there and then you can just drop it back down. Again, not very heavy. That'll give you access to all your plants. Happy days. Okay, to put the chain on, it's nice and simple. I'm just going to use some jack chain again. If you're going to an electrical wholesaler to get the conduit, get a box of jack chain. They will sell this, or you get in any um, builder's providers or hardware store as well. It's just a nice light chain. Slit this over just till it gets to the tipping point. So, which is a right about there. Measure it off. And that's where you want to screw it. So I'm just going to mark that. And we fit that guy. Right there. Okay guys, there we go. One hoop house plant are almost done. Now I'm gonna line this with felt. Like I said, the bottom's gonna be open. It's just gonna sit completely on the ground. I'm gonna fill it with soil and compost and all that up to the top of the third plank. So to about here. So it'll give the plants plenty of room to grow up into this as well. I might come up with a better mechanism than the chain. I'm not overly in love with the idea. It works grand. But um, there's better ways of doing this. So if I do make any alterations to it, I'll be sure to do an update video. And I'll give you guys plenty of shots of what's going on in this over the coming summer months. So I was just in editing the video and uh, yeah, a short chain on the side is all that's required. That big chain from here to here was absolute madness. I don't know what I was thinking, but uh, yeah, just a little short chain does the exact same job. So you can just let it down and the chain falls out of the way. Do that, don't do what I did the first time. Short chain on the side, much better. Now I'm also gonna probably paint the bottom of this with some sort of bitumen, um, just because these timbers are gonna be sitting directly on the soil and in contact with the soil. But uh, other than that, we're pretty much there. Now you could paint it if you wanted to, you could paint this any color you want to make it nice. Obviously you don't have to make this uh, uh, as big as this. This is a pretty big one, so the mechanism is a little bit on the cumbersome side. It's not overly heavy, it's just big, but uh, it should be grand. And um, I have a nice space to put this in. I wanna grow some nice peppers and maybe some chilies and stuff like that. So I need the kind of polytunnel for the heat to grow some stuff and some herbs and spices and that kind of thing. That's what's gonna be happening in here as well as maybe a few tomato plants. I'll keep you guys updated on that. So hopefully you've enjoyed it guys. Hopefully you've got something out of this build. Um, hopefully it inspires you to get making stuff and even maybe growing your own food as well. So that's it, I'm gonna get out of here now. So as always, give the video a thumbs up if you've liked it. Any comments, any questions you have, anything you wanna know about the project or the build, um, let me know. The total material cost for this was in around 160 euros. So that's what it cost me to actually make this eight foot by three and a half foot or 2.4 meter by one meter 10 wide uh, raised bed planter with a poly tunnel or hoop house top. So that's it guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. Until the next one, I shall see you later. Oh, I'll give you a quick look at the planter outside and you can see the veggies in that before we go.